The Roman legions were some of the toughest soldiers to ever live, and they were partially responsible for creating one of the most powerful empires of all time. Today, we're going to take a look at some of their advanced technology and eventually the downfall of their empire. From their siege equipment to the punishment they received for not following orders, here are unbelievable facts about the Roman legions. Are you guys ready for another action-packed American Eye video? Let's get on to it. Number 12. Who were the Roman legions? The Roman legions were one of the most powerful military units of the ancient world and were equipped with state-of-the-art equipment in order to take over the known world. A legion was typically comprised of 4,800 men divided into 10 cohorts with centurions taking on the commanding roles. The Roman legions were similar to the Greek phalanxes in a sense utilizing strong shields and a high sense of organization. After Rome evolved into a conquering nation, many skills and tactics evolved that were never seen before in the ancient times. Many enemies were surprised by how quickly they can move throughout their territory, lay siege, and conquer. As they crush other nations in their path, they would recruit new soldiers from faraway lands. Number 11. The Gladius The chosen sword of the infamous Roman legion, the Gladius was the standard issue sword in an army that nearly took over the world. The wounds left over by these blades were enough to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy who were accustomed to arrows or javelins. Typically designed as a thrusting weapon, it's been shown to slash pretty well too and has been proven in actual cutting tests. A well-placed thrust to an unarmored enemy did the job fairly quickly or even quick cut to the ankles to immobilize the target. It can also be utilized quite effectively with a shield and not a whole lot of training is needed. This one-handed sword can be transported fairly easily and since the blade was shorter, it was less likely to hit unintended victims. Number 10. Military Training First of all, women were not allowed to join the army back in those times and these were fiercely trained men who had to remain in peak physical condition at all times. Part of the Roman Legion military training would include 18-mile marches carrying roughly 90 pounds of supplies. This included weapons, shields, food rations, and a cooking pot, etc. Weapons training would take place each and every morning using a gladius and shields made from wood that was much heavier than their sword that they would use in battle. The Romans also understood the importance of accuracy with their swords, knowing that aiming at certain weak points in the armor was crucial when it came down to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Dummy javelins were also heavier than the real ones and would be fitted with a round stone tip in order to reduce injury while training. Just like today, discipline was extremely important for recruits. Many different stances and formations would be practiced for various scenarios so they'd be ready for real-life combat when the time finally came. Number 9. Discipline We just mentioned how discipline was important and soldiers had to be a lot more obedient in those times or it wasn't pretty. Even just showing the slightest bit of disobedience could have serious consequences. Many were stoned to death by their comrades for showing any kind of cowardice during battle or even for falling asleep while standing guard. Minor offenses were typically handled by the centurions, who would take care of the problem with the vine branch that would be used as a whip. One of the centurions, named Lucilius, acquired a nickname that translated roughly to, Bring me another. This was because he broke a large amount of vines while striking his own men and would ask for another one. Number 8. Advanced Ancient Armor Instead of armor being designed to prevent penetration from bullets, armor in ancient times needed to protect against arrows, daggers, swords, spears, and javelins. So there were quite a few things that they needed to be designed to do. Without Kevlar back in those days, the only choice for body armor was actually going to be metallic. Armor would vary by rank, but typically they were fitted with a breastplate, a helmet, and a greave on one leg. Chainmail shirts underneath their plate armor would protect well against arrows that would pierce through the outer layer of metal. Number 7. Praetorian Guards Praetorian guards were basically like the secret service of the Roman Emperor and consisted of high-ranking soldiers. They'd also, in some cases, escort very important Romans, including governors, senators, and generals. It was originally founded by the Emperor, Emperor Augustus, and managed to serve for roughly three centuries. Praetorian guards served for notable figures like Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. The elite group eventually became corrupt and overthrew some emperors and even proclaimed their own successors. It began to become a serious problem when the Praetorian Guards began receiving a pay and a half as much as the ordinary legion during that time. But during the time of Nero, they were actually receiving 3.5 times the pay, which obviously sparked some outrage. Number 6. Ancient Roman Barracks While constructing a new subway line in Rome, construction workers unearthed a military complex deep below the city. 
This barracks contained 39 rooms, but it also contained a collective grave with numerous skeletons. What a remarkable discovery for some construction workers. The mass tomb contained 13 skeletons believed to be the bodies of Praetorian guards. The skeletons also contained bronze bracelets. The dig also revealed beautiful mosaics like you see in this photo. The Roman barracks dig site was also located next to Villa Celli Montana, not too far away from the infamous Colosseum. This recent discovery proves that it's possible that we don't know everything about this vast, powerful empire. Number 5. Siege Weapons One of the ways the Roman army would lay siege upon their foes was by means of the ballista that we see here. Traditionally, they fire huge bolts, but like other crossbows, they can fire more circular projectiles which can cause more damage to people and city walls. Due to its crossbow design, it will also prove useful against zombies. During ancient times though, they would also light the crossbow bolts on fire in order to help set buildings ablaze. Roman ships would also utilize this technology for naval combat. They were made of wood and fitted with iron nails in the stand and animal sinew for the strings. It was highly accurate and could fire effectively at a range of 500 yards. Extensively used during Caesar's campaigns against Gaul and Great Britain, it was a highly prized weapon of the Roman legions. These ballista stones were found at an excavation site in Jerusalem, giving you a reminder of the extent of the Roman Empire. Number 4. Centurions There aren't a ton of helmets out there that are quite as iconic as the Roman Centurion helmet that was worn by the Centurions. Centurions were the commanders of 100 to 200 soldiers and wore not just for battle but also to look cool. The plumes you see at the top of the helmet were often made from horsehair, and while it was typically red, it could also be yellow, purple, and black. Centurions could also be paid about 17 times as much as a legionary soldier, and a few requirements were needed in order to receive that kind of pay. They need to be at least 30 years old, serve a few years in the military, display excellent physical condition, and know how to read. Number 3. The Lost Roman Legion is it possible that some Romans were caught off their normal path and ended up all the way into the Gobi Desert? They were capable of reaching some distances far away from Rome and even had cities as far away as Syria during the peak of their empire. Some believe that the Romans made contact with the inhabitants of Lycaon, which is located in the northern province of Gansu, China. The link between these vastly separated civilizations was first suggested by a professor in Chinese history at the well-respected Oxford University. What's also mysterious about the area is the Caucasian DNA and physical characteristics such as blonde hair and green eyes like you see in this collage of inhabitants in the area. There hasn't been sufficient evidence to link them without a doubt to the ancient Romans, but the physical features of these people still remain a mystery. Number 2. Decimation We mentioned previously how some serious punishments would take place among the Roman legions, but nothing was worse than decimation and it's as brutal as it sounds. In fact, the English word for decimation has its origins from this punishment and literally translates to a removal of a tenth. Guilty men in groups of ten would select from a bunch of sticks and whoever drew the shortest of the sticks would be stoned and clubbed to death by the remaining nine men. It was basically like a lottery that you really didn't want to win. While it might not sound like a lot of men, if a whole legion of soldiers are guilty, that means 480 men had to be executed. Although the practice didn't happen too often, it would be seen during moments when a large number of soldiers may have become scattered or retreated against orders. And number 1. But first, who do you think was the most advanced ancient civilization? Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number 1. The Fall of the Empire So we all know the story, Attila the Hun and Barbarians swoop into Rome, the most technologically advanced nation at the time, and get defeated by hordes of guys who need showers on horseback. Rome is too focused on orgies, wine, and assassinating each other in order to figure out how to repel a massive invasion, right? It's one of the most dramatic stories in history, but there have been other factors to blame that we haven't looked into. Instead of the empire completely falling, it was broken off into Western and Eastern Rome, but the West would quickly break off into different pieces. Scientists and especially geologists are beginning to explore possibilities that volcanoes played a bigger role in bringing down the empire than we once thought. Italy is certainly chock full of volcanoes getting ready to go off at any moment and we saw that from Mount Vesuvius. The ash and soot from the volcanoes could have certainly destroyed a large amount of crops that would have essentially crippled the Roman army. The Huns could have also certainly swooped in during a time when Rome was already devastated and plundered the capital with ease. Historians also recorded in 536 AD how the sky essentially turned black from thick dust which blocked out the sun. 
So which one did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.